Ever wished you could like peek behind the curtain at a huge organization, like see how they solve their leadership problems? Well, that's what we're doing today. And not just any organization. Uh, we're going back in time a bit to 2003 and diving into the world of the Norfolk Naval Shipyard. Exactly. We're talking about the people who keep those massive Navy ships running. We've got a real project plan from back then. And let me tell you, it's a wild ride. What's really interesting is that this plan shows a problem that tons of organizations still have today. How do you make sure your leaders actually have the right skills? And get this, they weren't messing around. This wasn't some small tweak. They wanted to completely redo how they trained their supervisors and managers. What they found was a big disconnect. The training they had was really generic, like one size fits all leadership training, you know? Kind of like trying to fix a jet engine with like just a basic wrench set. Doesn't really work, does it? Exactly. They realized their training wasn't giving their leaders the exact skills for that crazy environment. We're talking about managing teams that fix nuclear reactors, dealing with those huge dry dock repairs. It's intense. Absolutely. And the document itself actually talks about this mismatch. They knew their training was causing issues, like it meant the wrong people were getting promoted sometimes. And even when the right people got the jobs, they didn't have the training to be great. The plan actually says this was causing chaos in their projects. Classic system issue. They knew a quick fix wouldn't cut it. And this is where it gets good. They came up with a plan, get ready for it. They call it a performance-based curriculum architecture design, or CAD for short. Sounds complicated, right? <laughs> but the idea is pretty cool. They wanted to build a totally custom training system from scratch. And the basis of this whole system, get this, they were going to focus on their best performers, the superstars of the shipyard, the ones who were already amazing at their jobs. They called them master performers. And these folks, they were about to be the shipyard's secret weapon to create a better system for developing leaders. And that's where we're going next. Get ready to learn the secrets of these master performers. We're diving into the core of their strategy in part two. So last time we were talking about how the shipyard wanted to learn from their master performers. But how do you even start to do that? How do you figure out what makes them so good? Well, they had a process for that. And this is where it gets really interesting. They called it the PASI T process. PASI T. OK, I like it. What does it stand for? It's short for performance analysis and curriculum transformation. Basically, they were going to break down what made these master performers so effective. So it's like a deep dive within our deep dive. I love it. Did they like bring these master performers into a room and observe them or something? What did this PACT thing actually look like? Well, maybe not a lab or anything, but they did a bunch of interviews, observations, really tried to understand them. Imagine sitting in on those conversations. They wanted to know exactly what skills and knowledge these folks were using day to day. I bet those interviews were fascinating. Did they find anything surprising about how those top performers worked? You bet. The project plan actually gives a few examples. One master performer, uh, he was in charge of dry dock maintenance. He came up with this whole new system for scheduling and managing those really complex projects. Dry dock maintenance? Yeah, I can't even imagine trying to organize all of that. What did the system involve? They called it critical path flow. Basically, he mapped out every single step of the dry dock process. He figured out which tasks, if they were late, would delay the whole project. And then he built the entire schedule around those super important tasks. So instead of just scheduling things in order, he prioritized the most time sensitive stuff first. That's really clever. Right. And it worked. By using this critical path flow, this one supervisor, he was constantly finishing projects ahead of schedule which in a shipyard is almost unheard of. That's a game changer. No wonder they called him a master performer. So this past CT process, it was all about finding these kinds of innovations. Exactly. It wasn't about finding general leadership skills. They wanted the really specific, like almost secret things these people were doing that made such a difference. Like they were on a treasure hunt for these little bits of wisdom. So how did they take what they learned and actually turn it into training? Well, remember that CAD thing, the curriculum architecture design? Yeah, the shipyard's master plan for training. That's the one. They used everything they learned from those master performers to build out that CAD system. So instead of generic training, now they could create specific modules on the exact skills people needed for different roles in the shipyard. So like they could take those critical path flow secrets and make a training module just for supervisors who manage dry dock maintenance. No more boring lectures, just the stuff that actually works straight from the experts. You got it. And it wasn't just about skills either. They used the CAD to lay out 
all the things a supervisor needed to know, like safety rules, how different ship systems worked, everything. So they have all this great information from these master performers. They're building this really cool custom training system. It's all coming together. But did they actually have a plan to put this into action? Or was this going to be one of those things that looks good on paper, but never gets done for real? You know, that's what's really interesting about this project plan. It's really practical. They weren't just happy with having a design for this new training. They wanted to make it happen. Okay. I'm impressed. Give me the details. What did they have planned out? Well, for one thing, they knew that this wasn't going to be like an overnight thing. Right. Building a whole new training program. That takes time. It takes people. You need resources and a lot of coordination. It's not like you can just suddenly make everyone an expert on critical path flow or whatever other shipyard wisdom they have. Yeah, exactly. So they actually made like a step-by-step -step plan. They didn't try to do everything at once. They figured out which training modules were the most important to start with, the areas where their people needed the most help, you know? Smart. Focus on the big problems first, get some early successes, then keep going from there. And this is where you really see how much they were planning. They even figured out what resources they'd need for each step. Teachers, classrooms, materials, technology. They even thought about how much it would cost because people would be in training instead of working. They thought of everything. Wow, that's incredible. Most of us can barely plan dinner. And these folks are mapping out a training program that would take years to put in place. So they had the what and the when figured out. But what about the how? Did they stick with just normal classroom training or did they do anything more creative? Remember those T&D events we talked about earlier? Oh, yeah. Those were like hands-on workshops, right? Yeah. Mentoring programs. Those sounded way more interesting than just sitting through a boring PowerPoint. Those were a big part of their plan. Yeah. The shipyard knew that you don't become an expert by just reading about something or listening to someone talk. You need to actually do it. So these T&D events were their way to let people practice their skills in a safe environment. So like for that critical path flow thing, they might have had supervisors do a pretend project, like huh. plan out a fake dry dock schedule where they had to deal with realistic problems. That's exactly it. Take those skills from the training and really put them to the test. And with the mentoring part, they could pair up new supervisors with the master performers, a much more direct way to pass on that knowledge. It's like they created this whole system for learning and development. Yeah. So much more than just basic training. This has really changed how I think about training leaders, you know? It just goes to show you, being a good leader, it isn't about just being charismatic or something. It's about having the skills, the knowledge, and the support to succeed in that environment. It makes you wonder what we would find in other fields if we did something like that passy T process. What amazing knowledge is out there that we haven't uncovered yet. That's something to think about. And as you continue your own journey in leadership, we hope you'll take these lessons with you. Well, that wraps up our dump dive for today. We got a really interesting look at the Norfolk Naval Shipyard and their mission to create better leaders. We talked about how important it is to have the right training, how much we can learn from those who are already great at what they do, and how dedicated the shipyard was to making learning a continuous process. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep diving deep. Mm -hmm.